Okay, guys, this is our canvas to start today. So as you can see, she has a little bit of regrowth. She's about a level six naturally, like on the darker of a six side. And she's been going blonde. She was a level probably like three or four all over. I'll insert a photo right here of what she used to be. And she started the blonde process a few months ago. She's had three sessions done incredibly well. So shout out to Shelby Argyle. I'll put her Instagram right here. She's been doing the process of taking her lighter. And now we're just going to kind of finish it up. So we are going to do a halo highlight and we're going to show you guys what we're going to do to brighten her up in the root area. We don't need to touch her monies because they're really bright. So we're just going to bring up the root, feather through her ends to give her a pop, and then we're going to add extensions. So we are so excited to do this transformation today and show you how we're going to get it. Okay, guys, I'm going to show you how I'm going to tackle this front hairline. For the photo she showed us, she wants it really bright right here. And then obviously we're going to have more contrast in the back so that this really stands out. Um, the first thing I wanted to talk about is if you have a client that has um, either hormonal hair loss right here or breakage or whatever it may be, some people just have thinning hair in their hairline. I have it. Most people do. What we're going to do is secure those away first because if you highlight those, it's going to bring attention to them. So what we're gonna do is just pin those away and then we're gonna start right here at the base of her ear. So I'm gonna go on a diagonal taking very small sections. Same thing goes for these hairs right here. I don't wanna highlight those for the same reason. And I'm just using our little clips that we actually use for extensions because those are really nice for holding away little pieces. And the key to getting a really tight foil is to hold tension on the hair. So I'm gonna hold tension and that way I can direct it where I need it. So I'm holding my tension and I'm gonna do a little baby light like this. And then I'm gonna direct that foil and also hold the tension right where I need it. And then I'm using a small Goldwell brush right here so that I have a little more control over where the product goes. And I'm just doing it in her regrowth area since those ends are already so blonde. And then I'm just focusing on very small, small sections as I'm working my way up this section and I'm doing baby lights back to back to back. Okay, so now you can see that our section is starting to get a little bit wider as we work our way up. And the funny thing is, if you look at how her hair falls, it's naturally falling back like this. But if you do it like that and you paint the product on, that's where you can get a line or a stripe. So what you wanna do is pull it where it's coming out from the shape of the head, give it that tension, do your highlight, and then instead of placing your foil like right here where the hair's naturally laying, I'm gonna over direct it like this and that way I'm getting the corners on either side. And you wanna be very precise with your placement when you're doing the regrowth only so you don't take it down too far. And then fold up to tighten. And then with hair like this, where it's a little brighter right here, but it goes deeper down right here, I do all of the regrowth first. And then I'm just gonna feather down deeper right here where it's a little bit darker. We're using Goldwell OxyCure with 20 volume and Olaplex. And we focus so much on the money piece, which is awesome and obviously needed because that money piece is what all the clients see. But you really want to think of that front hairline as being the money piece altogether because the money piece doesn't connect unless all of this does. And that's how it's going to look the most natural and not like a stripe in the front. You want to make sure that they have that brightness all around their face, which is why we call this the halo technique because we're doing this halo in the front and then you'll see how we connect it in the back. Um, you kind of want to think as the back of the head as having a money piece as well, even though it's not in the front. When the client pulls their hair up, you want to make sure that that money piece connects all the way around the head in a halo so that they feel really bright no matter how they're wearing their hair.
Okay, this is the last piece in this section, and as you can see, it's starting to transition a little more up towards the top of the head. So I'm just gonna do that same thing. Okay, so we are done with that section. What we're gonna do now is fold these foils over just so that when we start to do this or this, it doesn't get in the way. And now we're gonna go through and do the money piece area. So as you can see here, I kind of carved it out in a triangle. So I did a section like this and then this side met like that. So it's a triangle right here. I love to do this when we're doing a bright money piece because I feel like it makes it fall so naturally. And then it also brings the contrast over. So I am just gonna follow that section up, doing really, really, really tiny baby lights back to back to back, using the small brush for the same reason we did earlier. And if you struggle with applying lightener in a root area only when you're doing it for maintenance, I'm gonna show you a little trick of how you can hold your brush to make it a little bit easier. So when you're holding your brush and going down like this, obviously you're gonna drag product if you're not super careful. So what you can do is you can actually go up this way or you can go like this and kind of work it side to side and that's gonna saturate that piece without taking it down too far. And I'm just gonna continue this pattern up until I get to the top of this triangle area, and my last section is gonna be right here at the top, and then we're gonna move on to the interior. Okay, so I'm now working on the interior. I'm gonna show you guys what I have been doing up the side of the head. So I'm gonna take a section like this and do a baby light. I'm just doing baby lights very fine back to back. So I'm gonna take this section and I'm following the curvature of the head, working up on an angle. Now I'm using the wider brush since my section is wider. And then I am feathering through on some of these pieces since she does have some dark and warmth down here. And then I'm gonna alternate what I do with the dropouts. So I have about three foils right here with dropouts. So right here, I'm going to back comb, baby light, and then I'm going to feather lightener into this backdrop just to tip out her ends a little bit and brighten her up. And I like to do this as I go so that they process evenly with the rest of the foils. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to continue on doing the same pattern of baby lights until I get to the top. But something I'm actually gonna do that maybe you wouldn't think about when doing a full head of baby lights, cause typically we're like, oh, we wanna get them as bright as we can. I'm actually gonna leave out a small section just like this right behind those money piece foils. And I'm literally just gonna leave it as it is because having that contrast right here is gonna make this stand out and then it's also gonna help transition back into here where we have a little more dimension. And I heard a quote one time that said, to blonde everything is to blonde nothing. And that's so true because without the low lights and the dimension, these won't look as blonde. So I'm literally just not gonna touch that. Then I'm going to continue my pattern of those baby lights. And then on the next dropout I do, I'm gonna do it a little differently and I'll show you guys what I mean. Okay, so now on the next dropout, after another three foils, I'm gonna back comb, do the same thing where I'm baby lighting, but this time I'm actually gonna do a low light, so I'm gonna take Goldwell Colorance 7NA, and this is because we do want dimension dropped out, and since her ends are a little bit gold, this is just gonna give us a cooler tone for those dropouts. 
so that the dropouts aren't warm in contrast with what we highlight. So every other dropout, I'm doing lightener, then a low light, lightener, low light. But then when I get to like the top area of the crown, my remaining dropouts will just be lightener for a pop of brightness towards the top. Okay. All right, guys, so I'm doing the same thing where you're just baby lighting, feathering through that little bit of orange banding. What I started off doing is I split the bottom section into two little parts and went slightly diagonal baby lights back to back to back and the one that was almost where the, my sectioning was larger than my foil where it's getting a little bit harder to foil i started just going in the middle right here and then something else i was doing to help me usually that first foil either at the bottom of the head or in a new section is a little bit harder to kind of like foil on and just because there's not enough sturdiness from up under here you can use a board but something that i did is fold my foil like i normally do but fold in the side so it gives it a little bit of a better base to kind of work on